travel C position. I was thinking about a piece that I really like in the best of in recital solos, book one, early elementary. This is the Surprise Symphony by Haydn, and this was arranged by Mary Leaf. It's a wonderful teacher duet part with so many of these pieces in the in recital series. Oh, you have to remember the in recital duet books. Oh my gosh, those are just the cream of the crop. And so are the Christmas as well as, oh my gosh, there's a traditional Christmas as well as pop Christmas. Oh, I have to do videos on all those too. Just wonderful, wonderful series. So the Surprise Symphony by Haydn, I like the idea that the student starts in middle C position but then on the second page, they change their hand position to almost middle C position, starting at measure 17. And then they have to change their hand position again in the line afterwards. So then they put their thumb and they go all the way up to these higher C's and E's, which is just terrific. So wonderful reinforcement for when the students are learning Succeeding at the Piano, Book 1A. So here's the Surprise Symphony. Play all quarter notes slightly detached. Here the student is in this treble C position. Now why does this sound so nice and flowy? What physical gesture am I using? I'm actually using the drip, the drop, the roll, right? But I'm not coming off yet because I have three of them to go to and then I'll come off at the end of that phrase. Unit nine. Page 36, treble C position. At the very beginning of this page is some analysis for our students to do. Treble C is what kind of interval up from G? We can get our trusty erasers, put an eraser on guide note G, and how about guide note C? How many keys are skipped? Two are skipped, right? Two are skipped. And students will realize that when they look at these two notes on the staff, that they have to skip a space note as well as a line note. So, number one here at the top says find treble G, play C, D, E, F, G, saying the note names out loud. E, F, G. How many patterns like this do you see in the music? This is number two. So here, the student says, well, I think I see second intervals, right, because there aren't any notes in between. So where do I see that pattern? Oh my goodness, I see it in measure one, two, three, and then in the second line, five and six. And then analysis point number three, circle this pattern in the music. Is that made up of seconds or thirds? Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and take a pencil and let's put an X on all the line notes that are skipped. So those are definitely patterns of a third. And where do you see that in your music? Oh my goodness, it's measure seven and eight. So you can have your students go ahead and tap and count their part. And then let's go ahead and see if they can play it. So do you notice what makes that beautiful phrase? They drop, they roll, drop, roll, and here they're rolling forward and off the keys. The 
the next line. question. Did you notice how I played that second phrase differently? The first time I went up like that. This time I think I'm going to actually drop on the G and then I'm going to roll forward and then off the key on the C. Actually makes more sense, right? The second one, right? Because otherwise the student is kind of stuck in the air like this and the wrist comes up and they look like there's some funny little mountain up there. We don't want that. So we're going to drop on the key instead, make sure the student has a nice flexible wrist so that they feel released and then roll forward and off the keys. So the teacher part with the student part.